Hi everyone, here is another test device or, that I've put together and what I've done is I put a DC motor inside this box here. You can kind of uh, see it uh, there on the bottom sticking out and I'm using the shaft as a bearing for this uh, rotor here which I have the magnets uh, attached to and right now I have the two uh, cube, one inch cube Neo N52 magnets and that is the same coil that I was working uh, and testing on the other previous configuration. Configuration. So it's the same thing, except it's not the big wheel. Uh, it's smaller, so it can spin at a faster frequency. And you see my uh, opto sensor uh, right there. And uh, that black tape is so that I don't get any reflections. And um, I have it uh, pretty accurate right now on the uh, pulse width and all that. So uh, I'm using the flyback of the uh, coil to come to this, uh, I guess, tank circuit if you want. And I have a 270 ohm resistor across that and the load of the motor here, which I'm feeding back. And I'm going to use the motor uh, in the uh, next test, which is just going to be removing the coil and putting it down here and uh, sending in the same input and we're going to see if the magnets are doing uh, any assisting. So everything is going to stay the same. Uh, this load here on the flyback, the resistor, and the um, uh, motor, uh, the DC motor that's turning this, will continue turning it and making the same frequency, actually. It's kind of interesting. I've got it at about this point there. Um, that's my tank circuit here for the input, and that's 100,000 microfarad. I've changed my current sensing resistor as per uh, Verpi's uh, instructions and that is the uh, now the current probe right here and my two grounds here and uh, I've also flipped around my uh, flyback diode. It's uh, now coming out uh, to the positive side instead of being on the negative side here of the, the capacitor. Uh, same circuit, obviously. Uh, we are now sending in uh, 20, 20 volts. Let me just step that down there a little bit. Should have it around 20 volts. There we go. Okay, so that's what we're going to use, a 20 volts input. So that's what's at this uh, big capacitor right there. And this is what's uh, coming back on the flyback side. So we have 24.5 volts, 24.4 volts uh, across that um, 270 ohm resistor and that uh, DC motor is in parallel with it too. So both of those two things are the loads. And uh, this is the uh, scope shot and there are the uh, voltage divisions right there, time divisions. So the yellow is the uh, current sens sensing resistor. The uh, light blue is the voltage uh, divisions. And that's the time. Notice that we have uh, four uh, time divisions here on this side and exactly uh, three time divisions there. So keep that in mind when we remove the coil uh, from the rotor. Uh, we're going to be looking at that. So there is our current and I've uh, engaged the mass function and uh, there is our data but that data is not good until I uh, just want to show you a close-up of uh, what it looks like there. Uh, very clean. And now what I'll do is I'll put in a lot of samples in the window so that we do have a very good number of samples that will make our data more accurate here. So that is our means across our current sensing resistor. So keep that in mind, 4.27, uh, somewhere around there, uh, millivolts. And that would be our RMS value right there. I don't know why it's uh, fluctuating to, there's enough samples there for it to be stable. So I don't know if maybe I have too many samples. Let me expand back out a little bit if that stabilizes it more. No, it doesn't change anything. So there is the uh, math, and uh, there is the uh, voltage uh, RMS values and mean value of the voltage. 
So basically 20 volts, you saw it, there was 10 volt divisions and you could clearly see that we're, uh, we have exactly two, uh, two divisions there. So that's what's important to look at right here. And basically our uh, math uh, value there. And now we're going to pull the coil away and we're going to see if we have uh, if we can uh, have the same score here and uh, if it is uh, lower then obviously I would say the magnets are uh, definitely uh, part participating in uh, making uh, the device more efficient I would say that's what we're debating so I'm gonna go ahead and pause the camera unfortunately I can't just pull away the coil uh, there's two uh, screws here that need to be taken out and pulled away and uh, I have to use my both hands. Okay so the coil has been removed there it is it's uh, making its own magnetic field and then collapsing and then coming back to this uh, capacitor and again our same load is connected to there and our motor is now powering the uh, the wheel which it was as well before but it's continuing to do that and that's what's giving us our uh, on off times because the opto is still there so I don't have to put in a simulated po pulse this way I think it's a great idea very simple and uh, so nothing has changed our uh, input is exactly the same same input 20 volts just gonna adjust that a little bit of fluctuations in the voltage here try to get it where uh, where we had it before so pretty well uh, 20 volts and uh, that is uh, our, our flyback voltage there across our load and the motor so pretty well 25 volts and uh, let's look at our scope and see if there's a difference and right away we can see a big difference uh, our current is uh, shooting up I haven't changed the time division or anything like that the voltage is identical and we have exactly same four here on this side so three there so we have exactly the same uh, timing and obviously the same voltage as you see it's going nothing has changed on the voltage side it's only the current that is uh, consuming more power uh, but yet our uh, load on the uh, coil is the same here on this side and we have just a little bit more uh, power across our resistor because we were at 24 uh, something but now we're pretty close to 20 uh, 25 volts. Yes, yeah, identical really. It's quite interesting how it coincides. But what doesn't coincide is the uh, current and that's uh, I guess what is being debated. So there you go. You can see the um, everything, uh, all the data there hasn't been uh, changed. So it's identical. And uh, let's uh, zoom out so we can put a lot of samples in our window and get ourselves uh, some real uh, data here. So our means is now uh, 5.7 around there, 5.7 millivolts. Uh, I'm going back here to my notes. We had uh, previously uh, 4.27 and uh, our RMS was at 16 millivolts. We're now at 22 uh, millivolts RMS. Our math was at about 70 uh, milliwatts, and now we're at uh, 95 uh, milliwatts. So we definitely are consuming uh, more power uh, in this configuration without the uh, magnet rotor participating in it. And uh, that's uh, what's up for debate and uh, I'll leave that with the pros to uh, see what they conclude from that and what I'll do is I'll post these uh, scope shots as well and uh, thanks for your interest bye now